Good morning. You're watching the Carolina Trust Financial Friday Community Panel, and I'm August, Carolina Trust Brand Ambassador. Unfortunately, Rainey's not with us today. She is still on maternity leave, enjoying time with her newborn. But we have some wonderful guests with us here today. We've got Ricky Stapp, the founder of the Ricky Stapp Foundation, and Ricky also helps us out with our Buddy Project, and then we've also got Kelly Moore, who's the Executive Director of the Shauna Clear Athletic Foundation. So thank you guys so much for being here with us today. I know, you know, this is our first, I guess, official summer community panel. Um, I was talking to Ricky before the show. I almost feel like summer hasn't really started yet this year because schools just got out, which is so, you know, so different. Most of the time the kids, kids get out so much earlier in the year. But do you guys have any summer plans going up? I know with you, you know, teaching that, yeah, so we, we got out of school last Wednesday, and, and now we, we start the football workouts. We started today, uh, bright and early. So I'm just excited to be around the uh, St. James Sharks football team all summer. Yeah, I'm sure, exactly. Yeah. And then you guys still kind of stayed with the, with the same normal college schedule. What is campus like, I guess, you know, during the summer without – the hustle and bustle of the students. Yeah, so at Coastal, our, our students left at the end of April, beginning of May. Mm -hmm. And so May is a super quiet month, but then when we jump into June, orientations start to happen. Yeah. And we're, we're so happy to see students back on campus. And this week has been fun to see the parents all across the country coming to Coastal and getting a chance to see the incoming students and just kind of live off of their energy. Everyone's yeah. excited to get back out there and, and our summer camps for uh, our athletic programs have started too. So yeah. we see some youth soccer players, we see some uh, baseball camps getting ready to start and some football camps starting too. Yeah, which is super, super excited. And I know, you know, with schools being out, it is so important for kids to be able to find things, you know, in our area to do all summer long. And I know, you know, last year there were so many camps that were closed mm -hmm. and, you know, kids couldn't participate in camps like they normally do. So that's great to hear that you guys have camp coming up, mm -hmm. you know, all summer long and are, are open back up. And then, Ricky, I know you also have, you know, your summer camp that we're going to talk about a little bit later, mm -hmm. which is super exciting. And I know we were saying, you know, 4th of July is right around the corner. Do you have any traditions for 4th of July? Typically, I kind of go to, you know, the lake or um, spend time at the beach. We always came to the beach, you know, for 4th of July um, as a kid. But now, as kind of the years have gone on, I'm here at the beach all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like I kind of tend to go away when I know everybody else is, is coming in. What about you, Ricky? Do you? Have any 4th of July plans? No, no, no plans. Hopefully I can find a good cookout. That's about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> find something good to eat, which I am actually planning to do on my um, Success in the Bag Instagram page all this upcoming week to do like DIY 4th of July. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to try to find like some good 4th of July mm -hmm. recipes and, um, you know, some different crafts, different things like that that people can try. Well, I will tell you, don't try to change nacho cheese to blue yeah Ooh. It, yeah yeah it, it doesn't work and then your guests will not want to try your nachos like with did you put blue food color in, in, in the cheese I did I did oh. I last year I wanted to get festive because with COVID there wasn't any anything open so I was trying to do something with with our small bubble that we had and yeah. I'm like well let's make red white and blue nachos so I yeah. got the red chips and then the the co regular corn chips and I was like I'll turn the cheese blue yeah it, it doesn't work so oh. don't, don't, I, don't I have do done it. so many many things like that over the years, you know, whether it's Christmas or 4th of July, I'm like, you always want to be super festive. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, let's add, you know, a little of this and a little of that. And I've had like green rice crispy treat. I mean, it just, mm -hmm. I feel like when you turn food from the color that they originally are, mm -hmm. even if the yeah. idea is to keep things festive, you know, it ends up being a little less appetizing. Than so don't put that on your Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> I will not. I will not. I'm, I'm hoping to do um, homemade ice cream, which I guess what I wouldn't really say is the 4th of July tradition in my family, but we would make homemade ice cream um, kind of for like bigger holidays. We did it for Father's Day and we did it for, you know, Mother's Day and we even did it for Christmas just because we like yeah. homemade ice cream mm -hmm. so much. But I didn't know until I guess yesterday when I went to the grocery store looking for stuff for Father's Day, homemade ice cream, that um, the Pioneer Woman has come up with like her own um, little packets where you pretty much just add, you know, like milk and cream mm -hmm. in with the packet to oh, make to make homemade ice cream. <laughs> and good. it definitely makes it easier. Mm. And it's so many, you know, interesting flavors as opposed to just doing like the traditional peach or mm -hmm. vanilla or something like that. But it's good for us on the go. I know Ricky and I, we stay busy. So yeah. that, oh, that, that's good to know. I'm sure. And we'll be right back and we're going to talk to Ricky a little bit more about his camp.
Welcome back to the Carolina Trust Financial Friday Community Panel, and we have guests Ricky Sapp and Kelly Moore here with us. And Ricky actually has a summer camp that he puts on with your Ricky Sapp Foundation. So tell us a little about that. So it started when 2010 when I got drafted. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to do something, and I came up with a, a football camp. Recently, I added an NFL cheerleader. So it's a free camp. Uh, the kids can come out. I have NFL guys there working with the kids, and I also have a Pro Bowl NFL cheerleader. So um, I've been doing it since 2010, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, of course. And I know you said you know you want to give back, and mm -hmm. you do lots of things with kids with your foundation and with teaching and coaching. What made you really decide that the best way to kind of give back to the community was through a sports camp? Well, it's summertime, and mm -hmm. I know the parents need the kids to be out of the house doing something. Yeah. So, <laughs> so for me, I love to see kids active. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know, why not have a football camp, invite some of my friends, run them through drills, also teach them some life lessons. So that was my whole idea behind it. Yeah, which, yeah. I mean, is a super helpful way to kind of stay involved. And like you said, keep those kids active. I think that is yeah. so, so important. And even mm -hmm. though, you know, we have a short summer, like this summer, mm -hmm. it's super important to make sure that kids are staying both, you know, mentally and physically active. And I know, you know, mentally, I had the opportunity, which was such an amazing opportunity, to come to um, St. James mm -hmm. and do a financial literacy presentation for um, some of the kids that Ricky teaches on a day-to-day -day basis, awesome. which prior to, you know, COVID, Carolina Trust was going into schools all the time. We did, you know, our buddy projects yep. with Ricky, which we yep. hope to start back up, you know. Next year, we did um, financial literacy presentations in school banking. And so I, I personally really missed that opportunity yeah. to be into the schools. Do any of your kids, you know, that come to, from St. James, come to your your camp that you put on, or you know, kind of what's the age range for? Well, that? I think at that point, you know, the St. James Sharks, they kind of get you know tired of me. So a lot of them don't. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no. They can never get tired of, of you. No. A lot of them don't come to the camp, but you know, I uh, I do things throughout the year with my foundation. You know, other than my camp, yeah. and a lot of them will come and, and help out with that. Which is great. Yeah. And so your camp, would you say that's the biggest event that you do? Um, did you do with the foundation or just kind of the biggest you do in the summer? You know, what are I, I, I think that's the biggest one in the summer. You know, I do the, 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 back, the uh, back to school. Yeah. The Christmas one is real funny because I dress up as an F. Right. I, I walk around and give out gifts. So I, I think I do. So I think that might be the biggest one. The, uh, the kids love that. Yeah, kids we talked. <laughs> um, I don't know if you were able to see it, but we talked to Ricky into getting into his elf costume this year with yes. us at Carolina Trust. What? And he was on a yes. living local and we went around the community and gave out money, oh, which yeah. was great. I mean, you have such a good, positive spirit. And I know, you know, that that really helps you with not only kids, but with people in the in the community as well. So it was really great to, to have you with us then and, you know, enjoying, enjoying the camps. And you said that you guys are having some camps at, at Coastal this summer. Now, is Coastal doing any... Um, any, I guess we were kind of talking about staying mentally, mentally active as well. Do they have any kind of educational camps going on at the school or is sure. it mainly sports? So this summer, uh, as we all know, we've been facing COVID-19 restrictions and our university just lifted uh, some of the restrictions. Mm -hmm. Well, due to that, we, we couldn't schedule anything inside of the buildings, inside of the classrooms. Gotcha. So our sports camps are outdoors. Mm -hmm. So in order to keep it safe and still uh, interactive, right now Coastal is only offering uh, sports camps. But okay. they hope to, uh, as the school year progresses, add in uh, and some activities for uh, educational purposes purposes as well throughout the year. Which is great. And I um, recently, you know, I was looking, once we, we visited um, Wildlife Action Camp mm -hmm. on Living Local, you know, last week. And so I wrote a recent blog post about it and went through and looked. And I did find, you know, a majority of the camps right now are those outdoor camps. But mm -hmm. luckily there are some camps that are doing, you know, different science things, um, STEM Academy, which is super, super important. And as someone in the schools, do you have any suggestions for um, parents at home to kind of help keep their kids, um, you know, mentally active as well as physically active during the summer? Well, a lot of that um, plays into having different kind of games. For me, I know for my kid, I like to come up with, with, with games where they can learn what's also fun. Yeah. And then get them outside and doing events too, because you know kids love to be outside. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, yeah. especially with this, with this beautiful weather. Yeah. And um, so I know, you know, with being outside, and I, that's super important to all of us, is mm -hmm. keeping kids mentally and physically active this yeah. summer. So we'll be right back here on the Carolina Trust Financial Friday Community Panel.
Welcome back to the Carolina Trust Financial Friday Community Panel, where I'm joined with Ricky Sapp and Kelly Moore. And Kelly, you recently just put on the Shauna Clear Athletic Foundation's biggest fundraising event of the year, the CAF Gala, mm -hmm. which Ricky and I were lucky enough to attend. It was absolutely a phenomenal event. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what goes on behind the scenes in planning such a large event. Sure, uh, and thank you guys both for coming, and, and mm -hmm. Carolina Trust is a, a great sponsor to that event, as well as many of the community members, so a uh, big shout out to everybody yeah. who, who participates. So the, the gala is an opportunity for us to celebrate the many accomplishments of Coastal Carolina Athletics mm -hmm. and also the university as a whole. Yeah. And it does serve as our largest fundraising event for the athletic operational needs and scholarship needs for our over 450 student athletes at Coastal Carolina. Uh, what goes into it, oh my goodness, one, it is a labor of love, let me tell oh, you that. I'm sure. Uh, uh, it's so funny, you and Jessica were such big helps and, and Jessica uh, said, yo Kelly, I feel like I'm your, your matron of honor for the, for the gala yeah, and I laughed and, and I was like, it, it takes an army, it really does. But we start planning it about a year ahead uh, and we, we go as, detailed as what is that centerpiece going to look like yeah. and then interactive activities for people at the event. What we find is if you love athletics like Ricky and I were and you were talking yeah. about you, you have that need physically but also mentally be stimulated. Uh -huh. So at this event we want to uh, tap into that competitive nature where all right I'm going to uh, spin this wheel and, and get a prize and oh, I didn't want that one let me do that one again. Yeah. And, you know uh, uh, give people an opportunity to support it at every level and we have a live band and we have a plated dinner and it was at the Marriott Grand Dunes, which is a beautiful backdrop. So that, that's really nice. And we have a VIP area where you can go and enjoy refreshments and food and yeah. just get to interact with a lot of Shauna Clears. So. Well, yeah, and I, I'm not to speak for Ricky, but I know that it was, you know, a, a wonderful event to attend and you really could tell, I mean, all the way down to, you know, the lighting being the perfect color of teal. It really was a beautiful event and, um, you know, one that you could really tell was put a lot of effort into. And for Thank those you. at home who may not know, what is the Shauna Clear Athletic Foundation and what do you guys, what do you guys do? Sure, so the Shauna Clear Athletic Foundation, we essentially are the fundraising arm for the athletic department. Mm -hmm. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit. And so when people donate to the CAF, there are some tax benefits yeah. uh, that go along with it, but th they are really investing in the impact they can have in young men and women at a very integral part of the their man yeah. and womanhood. So that that's being a, a former college athlete, and I know Ricky was as well, being able to be immersed in something you love and having supporters mm -hmm. uh, like all of our fans and our donors, it makes all the difference. And Ricky had mentioned that they do life outside uh, at their camps, right? Mm -hmm. So they teach them life lessons. Yeah. We wanna do that and be able to provide those opportunities through the Shauna Clear Athletic Foundation for our student athletes. So our main mission is to help generate revenue and generate support to get these young men and women uh, the best opportunities on and off the field and court. What is that like being over, you know, the sponsorship, kind of the team behind the team mm -hmm. when our teams are doing such a phenomenal job and are on such a national platform? Yeah, this year was exceptional. Our, our football coach won 12 Coach of the Year. Wow. Our athletic director won Athletic Director of the Year. Yeah, which is crazy. Uh, we, we won multiple All-American and All-Conference awards for our individual athletes, our volleyball team, men's soccer team, football team all won Sun Belt Conference Championships. Yeah. Our men's basketball team made it to the postseason. So we had an exceptional year uh, on the field. And, and off the field too, our, our athletes are crushing it in the classroom. So we're, we're excited about that. But to be a part of it uh, and to watch it, it's almost, I, I don't have children, but I feel like I yeah. have a child and I'm watching it blossom. And you know, being a, a student athlete at Coastal when we were 7,400 to seeing where we are now, yeah. it, I take a a bit of pride just like you yeah. do and it makes me smile and, and just say hey I'm a part of Teal Nation and I joke with my friends and we have a lot of multi uh, school fans right? right so you can be a fan of Clemson and Coastal you can yeah. be a fan of USC and Coastal yeah and I, I don't call them bandwagon fans I call them new forever fans that so. is definitely true well mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for being with us here today and thank you guys at home for watching today's Carolina Trust Financial Friday community panel